Ah, greetings. Welcome, weary traveler. You look like someone interested in only the most exotic and rare items. Look, I have a sword plus one, like every other magical sword out there. <laughs> no? Uh, how about a cloak of elements? Yes, made wholesale for you today. <laughs> there are only a thousand cloaks like this manufactured every hour. <laughs> Truly unique. Or not. So just how do you make magic items that are unique? Well, here is how. Hello and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great GM. My name is Guy and today we are talking making magic items that are truly awesome. Uh, before we go any further, however, I should point out that uh, if you like this video, smack that like button or share it with your friends. Why not? Magic items should be just that. Magical. But there are a few facets that you may not have considered. List, if you please. Thank you. So first off, let's look at the three major components of a magical item. Its function, its description, and its history. Now, function is exactly what it says. It's what does the magical item do? Now, you can default to the usual. Oh, it gives a bonus to hit, or does that damage or protection? Or, well, I mean, you can, you can default to those kinds of things. Or you could decide that this item was made by someone for a very specific reason. What was its function? A dagger of pain might have been forged to inflict non-lethal pain. What is the effect of that? Well, instead of suffering damage, the target must resist the effect of the blade using, let's say, like some sort of mental resistance or whatever. If they fail, they believe that they have been deeply wounded. It isn't fatal, just debilitatingly painful. They lose the, lo the, the, they lose the use of a limb, for example, as if it has been cut off, or they lose initiative, or they suffer something suitable to indicate that they're in incredible pain. The pain goes away at the end of the turn, because next turn, more pain is coming. That would be a dagger of pain, right? You want to kill your opponent, you want to make them suffer pain. A shield designed to save the user from falling rocks might detect unstable geology and erect a shield around the user if it thinks rocks are about to fall. But during combat, unless you're fighting some sort of geology-based monster, it's just a regular shield. Sure, a weapon might be made to be just stronger, but if you can make it do more, well, why not? So, description is next. Why must it be a beautifully silvered sword with platinum and, you know, a blacksmith's hammer that keeps metal hot whilst it's being forged? I mean, it isn't going to be a shiny example of perfection, is it? An assassin doesn't want a shiny handle or a silver entwined cape that has a matching brooch. I mean, it's got to be dark and grey and green and all those kinds of things. It's about making sure that what you describe actually makes sense and is what you think it would look like. You don't have to, however, we'll get to worry about, about being a designer later on now. A delicate silver wing describes the curve of this axe blade, and the tail of the wyvern wraps around the shaft leading to the handle. That's much more interesting than just an axe with a silver coating. When we describe the magical item to the players, the more info we can give, the better. Try to hit at least three of these things. Composition. What's it made out of? Metal, wood, glass. Colour of specific aspects. The design of the object. The sensation when holding the object. Is it warm? Is it silky smooth? Is it rough? And then what it looks like. A curved scimitar. A bowl of cool water. If you can manage three out of that list, your players are going to have an image in their head. So what that means is, is that you don't need to be an artistic designer to be able to make your own magical items and to make them feel as if they're beautiful and real. You just describe certain aspects and the players will fill in the rest of the information. Now, informing the function and the design of the magical item should be the history. Was it made last week? Uh, a thousand years ago? The main impact of this is describing it as either it's an age-worn relic or newly forged. 
It doesn't really impact the cost or the value. Sometimes it might do, but it does, thank you, it does give us a sense of history or of newness. So making magic items isn't enough though. We also need to think about who and how they might be used and used by. So this brings us to the debate. Do you preload your treasure box using random magical items generated by a list maker? Or do you place magical items there per PC? Uh, maybe you make them up as the box opens and you're like, oh, look, there's a thing in there. Oh, what a surprise. You're still faced with the decision of random or designed. Now, I tend to err on the side of designed. Random can be so unsatisfying. You get to the center of the dungeon and you find stuff you can't use. <laughs> But I also make sure that in the box there are maybe a few magical items for one or two members of the party, not all of them, and then a few totally random ones which the more enterprising players will actually be able to make use of. And then in the next adventure I try to give other party members specific items and then leave random ones for the previous recipients. That leads me to another one. The major topic to think about is the commonality of magic items. This is a difficult topic as it throws into question your world building and magic and all those kinds of things. So it's a very big one. But in general, are the PCs the only beings on the planet who will find magic items? Are they super rare? Or is there like a corner magic shop? And, if, you know, if they're magic emporiums in the outer plains, why isn't someone making a fortune selling basic magic items to every king and queen in the prime material plane? So... Whether they're rare or common, you need to decide if everyone has one or if no one has one. Because if you go with very few, then finding them should be equally rare. And it also means that they should be equally interesting, not just a sort of plus one. Of course, another thing to remember is that most TRPGs include mechanics and rules. They do. They do. And we need to make sure that your magic item follows those rules. Now, I'm never one who would ever be accused of knowing the rules very well, but I don't actually worry about the mechanics until the PC has had the item identified in some way. Come up with a cool description and then figure it out. So then I'll tell the player that the weapons mechanics, um, you know, it's, it's, it's sometimes it's easy. It's like this weapon translates abyssal language into common language. Or if it's magical effects, then I might get the players involved. If it's more mechanical effects, I'll get the players involved. Uh, tell me, Sam, uh, what's the damage of a level 10 lightning bolt? Sam then tells me whatever that damage might be, and boom, that's now what the magical item does. So when it comes to the other side of that equation in terms of magical items, can players forge magical items? Well, this requires you to go back to A, commonality, and B, mechanics. I've never allow a character or a, I never allow a character to create a magical item that is more powerful than they are. If they can cast a level sp four spell or whatever equivalency in your, your system, then they can't make a magic item that can cast a higher level spell of magic, for example. It's just no. I also make sure that it is an adventure to create the item, not something easy or simple. It's like you must go to Mordor to burn the ring, not somewhere else, right? So that's 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 give you an idea. Okay, let's turn our focus now to three minor points that you should be aware of as a GM. But before I go any further, however, remember to hit that subscribe button for no other reason than it's going to make me happy. Just do it. Just, just. It's like giving out magical items to PCs, right? It, it, it'll, it'll, it'll make the players happy. So make me happy. Subscribe. <clears throat> We look to balance within the party. Now, we've all had a player who has their PC hoard magic items and then not share it with anyone. They exist. I did a whole video on it. Anyway, so somehow that, that, that individual is always the one who seems to be able to want, they find them and then they don't share them. They just keep them. <clears throat> My quick fix for that, by the way, is uh, in the next adventure to then have that adventure focus on a PC who doesn't have the magical item. And then the PC, because it's their focus, they then get given the magical item very specifically. It could be like, oh, come home, father is ill, father is sick, father's been poisoned by a madman, the PCs kill the madman, and at the end of it, father dies tragically, but the sword of father is given to the PC as befitting him or her. <clears throat> That's a workaround. Now, so I try to balance out the items in a party. Um, if they do share, that's great. Um, so 
I try to go, okay, well, this is for you and this is for you. And I try and make custom items and things that are more randomly interesting. I don't, I don't roll for a random item. I randomly make something up. It's like, oh, this dagger it actually looks like a fish. And then in water, it allows the user to breathe underwater. There we go. Brilliant. It's different. Uh, stuff that's fun, that it has a function and, and brilliant. There we go. You're done. We also need to quickly talk about stealing magical items. If magical items are common in your world, then thieves should act as they normally would. They'd go for shiny or expensive looking stuff or stuff that's easily to get to. If magic items are rare, then I make a note of whenever my PCs brandish their magic items in public, a thief will see a couple thousand gold coins worth of magical dagger and they will go after it. They will steal that one item. I mean, if they do that, they're set for life. So finally, another point to consider in crafting a magical item is the provenance, the trackable history of the item. Are there portraits of the item that hang in a castle somewhere? Are there historical records of its use? Does it have a legend attached to it? If items are rare, then most likely it should have a history. Even if it's new, then it's it's unknown, but it is still a curiosity and it will start to generate provenance. So if nobody knows about it, then it must be proved to be of power before anyone takes it seriously. Excalibur, it didn't need to prove itself. When Arthur pulled it from the stone, Everyone was like, oh yeah, 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 it's Excalibur, he's the king. That's how it works. Everyone knew that. However, Humbo's Club of smack -a -mole, it has no history, and until it does something amazing, it's great, just a great big stick, really. Anyway. That's it for me this week. What is your favorite magic item that you've created and why is it your most favorite magic item? Let us know in the comments down below. We can all steal it, uh, learn from it, uh, learn from one another, get inspired by one another. Anyway, stick around for the sponsor's shout out. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. This week's sponsor is you. That's right, you and all of the wonderful patrons who watch this channel. I cannot thank you enough for being patrons, so you're all gonna get a magical item. That's right, you are all going to get a choice between a sword of power, a shield of defense, a mystical staff, or an ancient tome. Leave your choice down below and claim the magic item for your PC today. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and here's to many years to come. Until then, however, I wish you and yours the very happiest of gaming.